The Lubavitcher Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson was born on Yud Aleph Nisan, 1902, in the Ukrainian Russian town of Nikolaev. His father, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Schneerson, was a well known Kabbalist and Talmudic scholar who was arrested for his fearless activities on behalf of strengthening Yiddishkeit in the Soviet Union. Years later, the Rebbe would say, From my father, I learned never to be afraid. The Rebbe's mother, Rebbe Tzimchano, was an aristocratic woman from a respected rabbinical family. Her home was a constant hub of communal activity. At the age of seven, the Rebbe moved with his parents to Yekaterinoslav. Little is known of the Rebbe's early life because for most of those years, the bulk of his days and nights were spent in private study. In 1923, the Rebbe met Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, who then served as the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Six years earlier, the Communist Party had taken control of the Russian Empire and started to wage war against Judaism. Schools and shuls were shut down, rebellion were imprisoned, and many were shot in the underground chambers of the secret police. Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak led the struggle to keep Judaism alive in Soviet Russia by building underground schools, mikvahs, and supplying financial aid and kosher food. The Rebbe joined him in this highly secret and extremely dangerous work. In 1926, the Rebbe became engaged to marry Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak's second daughter, Chaimushka. In 1927, officers came to Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak's apartment to arrest him. Rabbi Tzim Chayamushka signaled the fact to the Rebbe from a window so that the Rebbe could warn all those involved. This started the international effort that would shorten the death sentence placed upon Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak and obtain his release. The Rebbe was one of the select circle of family members allowed to leave the country with Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak in 1927. Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak continued to direct his activities from the other side of the Iron Curtain until his passing in 1950, when the Rebbe, whose own involvement never faded, assumed the leadership of Chabad. In the darkest years of anti-religious persecution, the Rebbe kept in contact with the Jews of the Soviet Union through many secret channels, even sending emissaries in the guise of tourists and business travelers. When communism subsided, the Rebbe's network moved above ground to continue to provide material and spiritual aid to Russian Jewry. In December of 1928, the Rebbe's marriage to Rebbe Tzimchaya Mushka, daughter of the previous Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, was held in Warsaw, Poland. Hundreds of miles away, another wedding celebration was being held that night. In the city of Yekaterinoslav, the Rebbe's parents were denied permission to travel to Warsaw. In spite of being prevented from attending the marriage of their firstborn son, they were determined to rejoice in his joy. The Rebbe's mother, Rebbe Tzimchana, described the wedding celebration held in their home, which lacked the physical presence of the groom and bride, Yet, there was a flame with joy as powerful as the pain in the groom's parents' hearts. Shortly after their marriage, the Rebbe and his wife moved to Berlin, where the Rebbe enrolled in University of Berlin and took courses in philosophy and mathematics. When Hitler, Yamach Shemot, came into power in 1933, the Rebbe and Rebetzin went to Paris, where the Rebbe continued learning at the Engineering College until 1938. Although he pursued academic knowledge at the leading universities of Europe, the Rebbe's most important interests were in his total immersion in Torah study and his work on behalf of Russian Jewry. On June 14, 1940, the Nazis conquered Paris. A French general offered the Rebbe a home in the countryside, but the Rebbe, figuring out the true significance of the Nazis' occupation, declined the offer and fled from Paris on one of the last trains to leave the city. After a dangerous journey over the front lines of the occupation, the Rebbe and his wife arrived in Vichy, France. They remained in Vichy for a few months, then relocated to southern France where they stayed until their final escape from Europe. Throughout this time, the Rebbe's father-in-law conducted a vigorous campaign to rescue them and bring them to the safe haven of America. Like millions of others in his generation, the Rebbe was personally touched by the Holocaust. His younger brother, Dov Bear, was killed along with a beloved grandmother and other family members. The Rebbe's wife lost her younger sister, Shana, 
who was killed with her husband and their adoptive son. In 1943, the Rebbe published Hayom Yom, which is a pocket-sized booklet with a Hasidic saying for each day of the year. The Rebbe taught through his Fabringens, which are Hasidic gatherings in which thousands of men, Hasidim or not, come together and sing Nagunim, discuss Sichos, and drink Lachayims. On January 28, 1950, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson passed away. For a year, the Rebbe grieved for his father-in-law before accepting the role of the Rebbe. From the very start, it was clear that he was meant to carry on his father-in-law's work to reach out and embrace every Jew, no matter how spiritually distant he is or not. The Rebbe wanted to reach every Jew on the face of the earth and lead them towards Judaism and bringing Mashiach. But reaching every Jew is technically impossible for one man to do. So, the Rebbe sent out Shluchim to literally every corner of the world that is even remotely possible that even one Jew lives there. Every Shliach acted as the extension of the Rebbe, and the Rebbe regarded each as his children. In touch with politics, science, and pretty much everything else, the Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, is arguably one of the coolest things to happen in Judaism in the last 100 years. He was a groundbreaker, yet he was respected by nearly everyone in and out of the religious world. Many consider him to be the greatest spiritual leader of our generation. Want to look into Judaism? Need a place for Shabbos or holidays? Thanks to him, there's a place called Chabad around every corner waiting for you with open arms, a smile, and a hot meal.